Today we are going to turn this block of aluminum into a barrel changing vice block for a Cobra M11. Sometimes the barrels on the M11s are super dupes tight and if you try to grip the receiver in a vice to change the barrel without this tool installed, it will basically just instantly crush the whole receiver. First step is to mount the block in the mill and start squaring up all the edges. Now we have to bust out the calipers and get some detailed measurements of the inner dimensions of the receiver. The vice block we're making needs to fit very, very snugly. If there's any play in the fitting at all, um, that will allow an equal amount of crushing to the receiver. That's got to be uh, quite a mind trip. I mean, to start a, a run when it's not a primary strength and know you have to go all the way. Most of the, or many of the insurgents have been put down. Now we're going to cover the block in some layout fluid to mark out where our first cut is going to be. Very substantial. Our shop saw is down at the moment, so I'll be cutting this in the mill, and I need to give myself a guideline to uh, run the end mill along. The epicenter of the insurgency was in Ramadi, and so that's where my seal captain deployed to. With this particular project, we can just use the calipers to scribe the lines. Um, this will give us enough accuracy. We don't need a surface plate and height gauge or anything crazy like that. In a battle such as, you know, Ramadi, how do you define objectives in the longer term? Not necessarily on a nightly basis, but like in the longer term so that you can... We would fire guys, you know, later when I was running training, we would fire a couple leaders from every, from every SEAL team because they, they couldn't they couldn't lead. And 99.9% .9 of the time, it, was, it wasn't a question of their ability, it was a question of their ability to listen and their ability to step outside and see that maybe a better way to do tactical situation that was right in front of me. Now that the cut line is all marked out, we can put our aluminum block back into the mill vise and uh, make our first cut. They nod their head, they pull out their notebook, they take notes. Our mill is an old clapped out Taiwanese beauty um, with a few thou run out in pretty much every single direction. Uh, the table and gauges and quill are all a bit Willy Wonka, so you got to keep an eye on her. But she'll uh, she'll do what we need. You can try and change people, and sometimes they would change, but it's difficult to get them to change. You know, that's, some people are, are born with that characteristic. We don't have DRO or any of these, uh, you know, modern conveniences, so we're just lining everything up by eyeball here. Self-awareness is also a big component. I always, always wear eye protection, not so much for chips, um, but just for the eventual explosion of the mill. This is the thinnest end mill I had on hand at the time. We're basically just cutting the block in two, so it's going to do just fine. It's going to waste a little bit more material than I would normally like to waste, but aluminum is cheap. It's not really a big deal. The workpiece is actually starting to come loose uh, in the vise here, so I'm going to go ahead and take it out and spin it 90 degrees so I can get a better grip on it. At this point, I've already flipped the block and cut most of the way through. Um, with the block in this orientation, I can't cut all the way through or I'll run into the vise. So I'll have to take it back out, flip the other way again, and make the final cut. If you are hearing what sounds like horrible, horrible tool chatter, congratulations, you have good ears.
here is the block uh, ready for its final cut. When we make this next cut, we're also going to be facing it and getting our final dimension in that direction. Now the block has one of its final dimensions cut. Um, the mill left a lot of super sharp edges on it, so we're going to take a hand file and just knock those down a bit. It's also important to get rid of these so that next time we grip it in the mill vise, uh, there's no burrs that sort of kick it off center and, and make your cuts crooked. <clears throat> Now we are back to the layout fluid so we can mark out our other cut. For this cut, we are putting the vice block up on a set of parallels in the mill vice. And with this cut, we're simply using the end mill to sort of shave off the top. You can see our little guideline marking there on the front face. With the workpiece mounted in this orientation in the mill, we can take advantage of the mill's power feed and let it scoot the table around for us. Okay, now we have both of the receiver's inner dimensions roughed out, and it's time for a test fit. And she don't want to go. It wouldn't slip in at all, but I mean, we were just a couple thou off, so instead of popping it back in the mill, we're just going to hit the belt sander. Just that real light amount of sanding um, already let it slip in a bit. It's still super, super tight and needs more, but it's, you know, you got to keep checking it as you go because it's getting close. Just another light round of sanding. Um, this is also nice because it helps us get rid of some of the machining marks. At this point, it slips all the way in, but the barrel is in the way. So what we've got to do now is throw some layout fluid on the front face and slam it against the barrel and try to get a, a mark for making a relief cut. Just tapping it in wasn't working, so we're getting a little caveman on it here. Alright, and this ring shows us exactly where the barrel is hitting and where we need to make our cut. 
and that Sharpie line is just sort of basically the depth we need to go. The easiest way to cut the relief for the barrel is by doing a simple plunge cut. The grip on the workpiece isn't very strong in this orientation, so we've got to be really, really careful and take real light cuts. Um, if we're not careful, it could easily just rip the, rip the aluminum block right out of there and chigger it up. Shit looks like it cut pretty goddamn straight, man. <laughs> Now that the relief cut is made, it's time to test fit it again. At this point, it does slide in, but it's still too tight, um, and we are not sure where. Take it down a little bit on the... Yeah. At this point, we're just going to slather the whole thing in layout fluid and slip it in and out a bunch of times until we can see exactly where it's rubbing. Interesting. So not the barrel and not the top, but all of the other three sides. Looks like it's mostly the sides though, huh? Alright, back to the sander one more time to hit all the areas that were showing uh, with the layout fluid. Alright, all the high spots have been knocked off and the block slides almost all the way forward. The only thing stopping it is a little seam in the metal where the front of the receiver meets the lug. If you see right here, there's a little piece of protruding metal. Um, so what we need to do is radius the corners on the block to give them some clearance for it to slide all the way in. This is what we ended up with after radiusing the corners. We didn't really take much material off, but it is enough to let it clear now. And it does slide all the way in now. It's a real snug fit. You gotta kinda force it. But it's just at that right point where it's hard to put in but it doesn't get stuck. And here it is, gripped in the vise. I've actually got the vise torqued down real hard on it and uh, nothing's bending, nothing's warping. It's good to go.